Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 7th of April, 2023. Uh, this is in Asia time. So thanks for being here. Topics that I've got on the agenda, and if you've got additional topics, call them out. I've got, uh, I've got, Google Summer of Code, pull requests of interest. This is one where I want uh, then improved CI process, more FYI, reducing number of pull requests. So really the top two on my list are these two right here. Mukul, are there any topics that you wanted to bring? And chat is okay as a way to express them. Uh, for the political part, I was thinking, uh, like, why not add uh, data action of, uh, like, data action that reduces pull requests based on, a, on the inactivity? Uh, like, I'll be filling the chat. I'm, uh, I'm having yeah. real difficulty understanding what you're saying. I apologize, but the, the audio quality from your microphone seems okay. to be pretty poor. Could you say it again uh, or type it in chat? Okay, I got it. Great. Okay, so so you posted a link to stale as an action. Uh, is your question then related to considering the concept of marking pull requests marking pull requests as stale? Ah, yes. Okay. So, so let's put that as a topic, uh, automatically closing, closing stale pull requests, and we can discuss it. Good. All right. Any other topics that we need to put on the agenda for today? I'm good. Okay, great. So FY for information's sake, Google Summer of Code review and ranking period started. It started actually for April, 2023. Mark has 16 proposals to review. So mm -hmm. um, I got a bunch and I've got now about seven more days to do it. So hang in there. Um, next topic was automatically closing stale pull requests. So I think this may be prompted by the question reducing the number of open pull requests. And our experience has, un has almost universally been that automatically closing stale pull requests is a, a terribly negative experience for the pull request submitter. because they, they can't make the maintainers review it any sooner. Faster, right? They just can't. There's nothing a, a, a submitter can do closing a stale pull request if, as a maintainer, I was always really great about reviewing everything, might, might work. But the problem is rarely the main, rarely, rarely the submitter's problem. It's usually that the maintainer's overloaded and just can't do it. And so for me, um, and Daniel Beck has had the same experience, and he's quite quite vocal about it, saying, "No, stale bot is the state closing stale pull requests is possibly the worst behavior he's ever seen." Now, if it's Closing an abandoned pull request where the, the submitter is no longer responding. That I think is reasonable, but it requires maintainer engagement to confirm that the uh, submitter is no longer responding, unresponsive. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I've got some rather specific examples here. Meg submitted. 
what it was uh it's ready for five or five to ten pull requests oh yeah there's a bunch of them yeah it's one huge one yeah uh so a year and a half ago or so yeah exactly 12 to 18 months ago and they are still they are still valid still useful and still relevant but they need review from subject matter experts and and the reality is until we get the review from subject matter experts we don't want to close those and declaring them stale actually would be a really bad thing because they're they're only idle because they've not been not had time from a maintainer from from a subject matter expert it's not really even a maintainer it's someone who really knows the material deeply and can say yes this is accurate or no it's not so mm -hmm. mukul does that answer your question The other situation that I have seen is, and I'm not sure what to do. I mean, it's a case by case, I suppose. Somebody did the PR and they got some comments. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're like minor comments or tangential. I remember somebody that we both know very well would be, oh, maybe we should instead do such and such. Or mm -hmm. And the original the person who originally wrote it doesn't come back, but the pull request itself is good and somebody else could look at it and you know there's a couple of suggestions that they could approve or something and we could go ahead it would be worth preserving that work right other times you know the comments are sort of you know rather severe would require a lot of work and maybe it's at that point you know but again i think it needs to be a case by case review and it depends. I mean, some of them, some of the people are people who came onto the project and then decided their interests were elsewhere and took off. Right. Um, some of them are people who are probably still around that if you pinged them and said, you know, this PR is out there and it would just take a little work and we could push it, would say, oh, yeah, and go in and do it. So. Right. Yep. But I mean, now, a lot of people seem to think that when they've pushed the PR, their job is done. Yeah. Well, and 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 in part it is right ultimately the at least the thing i've seen with pull requests submitted to the git plugin is that people really like it when i accept a pull request to the git plugin because they accept that that is a full and complete assignment of ownership from them to mark weight mm -hmm. and 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 it's a it's an elegant thing right if i can get somebody else to take ownership of code i created I that's a big win but the 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 penalty pro, penalty for me as a maintainer says ah uh, I will own that because the submitter will go away right they will go right. away and they'll return to whatever but I'll keep maintaining and because I keep maintaining I own it and because I own it I'm hesitant to merge it or I'm very much more careful so right. it's now Mukul had Mukul had asked a question about well, what if we marked it for six months? What if we set a time limit, right? Uh, on the pull request, but the, and, and there is a technique like this that's being used in the, on, in Jenkins core, but it's, it's got a, it has to have a matching, matching commitment from the maintainers that I don't think we're ready to give on Jenkins documentation. So the it the requires a matching commitment from maintainers that they will respond, they will, and the document, the contributing guide on Jenkins core says respond uh, or review promptly and provide actionable feedback. So that meaning, um, if if I object to a change, 
describe what must change before to solve it. And, and right now we don't have enough documentation maintainers to make that kind of commitment. So for me, I'm, I'm not willing to put a time limit on, in particular, if we look at the Jenkins.io poll requests, we can look very specifically there and say, okay, how old's the oldest pull request? And the oldest pull request is all the way from September of 2019. And is it still useful? Yes, actually it is still potentially useful. This migration of the internationalization page uh, is still a very real thing. And internationalization could be a, is a, a hot topic in the Jenkins community. So, so there is still plenty to be done there. Mokul, does that address your your question? Why we're why we're hesitant to to put up a process that says after a certain period we'll close idle pull requests? Great, thank you. Okay. But I did say down farther down there, you have the question of whether we should review those as part of the office hours. I think that might be useful. Mm, you, right. You know. Right. I mean, because one thing is we tend to forget about these. We tend to forget that they're out there. Right. Um, and I think you did say we did make some progress a couple months ago. We got a bunch of them closed, right? You we did. Labeled. Well, and and that's a that's a that's a place where office hours could do it. And I'm gonna in fact use today's office hours to review two because I thought, okay, this is a place, these two in particular, a place where us sitting together may be able to see things that I might not have seen alone. Yeah. And one thing what I would add to that is that maybe we should always leave a breadcrumb, always leave a comment mm. that we looked at this at the docs office hours on whatever date. Um, and we decided this or we saw this and and we could even um i don't know you know <laughs> i mean we could say is waiting for review by at daniel beck or at mm -hmm. well or something like that ping i mean the people are busy but people also forget that it's out there right and it's it depends like i know like mine tend to take and of course because they're getting stale so that's going to make them tougher in fact Something that might not be a bad idea would be for like Kevin, because I'm not really on the project full time these days, for mm -hmm. Kevin to look at those. There may be some work that's obvious that could be done right now. I'm sure they've got conflicts with things that have happened since then. Right. And he might want to go through, you know, as a writer and clean them up so they're current. Mm -hmm. um, but especially like some of them, we could look at them and say, you know, this is three paragraphs. This should take you 10 minutes to review. Um, and we could get it out of there. Um, I think in my case, I think there's one huge one and all the others are kind of dependent on that one. Yeah, that was my sense with yours. And there's this, this really old one is, has dependencies on some rather specific knowledge, some specific skills that, that, need to be handled and and it's it's not an immediately obvious thing oh this is what i have to do i'm also thinking i haven't i don't remember what was in that one it's been a long time since i looked at it but you do have this new tool whose name i keep forgetting to make it easier to localize right um, the cr and that crowd that, in that if if we're going to update the docs for this that we should probably mention that that should be included you know that may need an update too right Exactly. And, but that would be something else we could look at. Is this, is this something, I mean, for, you know, would this be something appropriate? And then we could give an at Kevin to it too. Mm -hmm. um, All right. So 
anything else on the stale stale pull request topic okay let's take the next topic then pull requests of interest so these are two relatively recent pull requests that i think as a group we can benefit by discussing them here so first is improvements to the layout of the blog uh, proposed by Jan Faracek. So Jan is one of the key drivers on the Jenkins UI improvements. He's ah. done all sorts of really elegant things and he's proposed uh, an improvement to the Jenkins.io page. So here's how the blog page looks in his new, in his new proposed layout. Ah. So now let's compare that. Remember that page and let's compare that with this one where it looks like this. So new page, old page. Hmm. Now we may say, oh, what if, what if you're running on a small screen? So let's look at it on a narrower screen. That's how it, it scales. Nicely. Oh, what about my telephone? Yep, it still scales even on my telephone. So now, now comments, questions, insights offered. So Meg, um, Mukul, others, are there things that you see? Oh, well, this could be a problem or that could be a problem with this, this proposed new layout. To me, the new layout looks messy. Looks messy. Okay. And I and mean, it's just, there's, there's two, there's all these different blocks. It could be freestanding, but they, you know, they're all different colors and different sizes and different styles and which is kind of what it is for blogs. This may be totally, but it just, it looks ugly. But I see, but I'm not I'm not a pictorial learner. I'm so I I kind of like the words, but I also see that it doesn't grab you. That these maybe grab you. Interesting. Although, okay. So yeah. so you find the lack of consistency that's caused by the images to be a distraction. Right. And it and it may be that I mean they it isn't that they all have to be the same image. In fact, part mm -hmm. of the point would be to have different, but something on style, like the that first one which i find extremely ugly but i don't do sci-fi okay hang on which one the first android one. yeah the android and jenkins uh -huh. just, but but that's got a little square background and then the one in the middle has like no background and then the one on the far right has the blue sort of circular thing uh -huh. which you know and then we go down you see and so maybe it's just that mix maybe we need to be and it's, I don't, other people need to look at this because this is not my area, but that's just, you know, a consistent that they either have a round colored background or a square colored background or no background. Interesting. Okay. All right. So that might, that I might don't know if that towards... would help. Ask well, but... the guy who's the expert on these things, what he would, what he would think of that. Well, I think, I think it's an interesting thought of what would, should there be a, 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 a better a, a more precise standard on the the backgrounds for these images for instance so that if they were all using this sort of white background would that be better would that be worse you know it's i suspect that the i think the colored backgrounds are better i think they frame them the ones okay. that don't have the color behind them sort of go on forever Okay, so so backgrounds like the one for this image. Right, either, yeah. Or where it's got the sort of gray or this one with its modeled. Yeah. Whereas the... the or the Jenkins newsletter or... Yeah, okay, all right, good. So ask him what he thinks because he's an expert. He does this, you know, all I'm thinking of is I've seen, it's been said of pages where, yeah, I've and I've been guilty of this, using all these different types and it looks like it's a test for a type font or something uh -huh. you just look at it and, and that's sort of my it's just like a whole bunch of people who never spoke to each other all threw stuff up here which is actually kind of the way it goes with blogs but i would also a tangential one 
um, when we're using just a, a generic um, Jenkins icon, I'd like to see if you some more of our diverse ones. We've got some diverse ones. The female Jenkins, the, you know, I think we've got some for other ethnicities and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and that's I, but, fair. But that's, that's just a thought for me as, you know, diversity is an issue and it's a problem. We don't have some really, we can't really control what's coming out of the universities, et cetera. But that that would be a nice way when it's just like a generic Jenkins and that could, and it would be a fun, you know, we've got all these fun. We do have the one, the, the baby Jenkins. I love that. C certainly we've got lots. These, these panels that you're seeing, the images you're seeing here are actually images that are defined with the blog post for open graph. So they're used, they're defined by, um, they're, they're defined as part of the the blog post itself and thus um, that's why this one has exactly the look it does because it happens to have an open graph image for that ah. that thing and that's why this one has the look it does because this picture here is its open graph image okay now that doesn't mean that we couldn't do something different for me the i've i've tended to use this white background thing just because it's easier for me to get it into open graph but but i think i could see the point of no give me a consistent background that's something other than other than transparent other than white mm -hmm. and and i think that's an interesting idea i mean even if we could have something now the problem is it depends what the graphic like the atlassian jury you wouldn't want a blue background for that one Right, right. Well, but but this but, sort of this light, this gray tone that's here behind this this the circle there. Right. That that is probably safe enough to do in. Well, I don't know. That's interesting, huh? I'm not sure where that image sources from. Interesting. Well, maybe we have a couple of different choices. I mean, then it's. Then it's going to look weird if like two thirds of them have this gray background and then one has black and one has blue or something like that, you know. Well, and and that's a that's a topic that we can certainly, as part of future blog posts, say, hey, let's use the following as a as a as standard background color. Now, one of the challenges with setting any kind of a standard like that is, let's see if I can switch it here. How do I switch to dark have you ever seen it in dark theme no dark theme let's see so how do i do a dark theme i've got a dark theme in chrome just a minute dark theme for google chrome okay oh no it's a separate add-on so i i okay. can't do it immediately i've seen it before and one of my worries is that that some of these may not be well suited to the transition to dark and we've certainly got users who like dark theme right and again i'm just looking to though some of the white ones if we went to gray they've got that gray plus and there's another one down below that's got that mm -hmm. so if we went to a gray theme we would lose that well but in that case the gray would have to be the, that gray plus would be a on the next on a blog post that uses that, if we've got a gray background, the creator of the image will certainly not use a gray image in the background. Right. Right. That that's easy. New new posts. And if we say, hey, we want we want to set a standard background color for images, all the better. Or maybe we say, hey, let's make them transparent so that whatever the user is using is shown through to the image mm -hmm. okay good and it, what does everybody else think of it i take it you liked it before i opened my mouth i, I do like it yeah but that that doesn't my liking it doesn't mean anything about about yes or no i mean because i because major caveats i'm not pictorially motivated mm -hmm. and an awful lot of the graphics that get used in the computer industry 
have sci-fi overtones or manly man overtones that just set me on edge. Uh, so I okay. don't like much of what I see. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here it is. Thanks, Mokul. Here it is in uh, dark theme. Ah, uh, that's a little less jarring, isn't it? At least it looks like the graphic for each one is the same size, et cetera. Right. Well, and, and that's part of the hint, right, is because the 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 background of these of these slides that have a white background, a pure white background, or possibly transparent, <laughs> that makes it and and interesting. <laughs> this one went completely dark. Oh, yeah. we lost the gray behind it, didn't we? That's I, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm fascinated by that. Maybe that's something about the image. Really cool. So for me in dark theme, I actually think I find it even even better in dark theme. Okay, this one is a reminder that some of them do not have an open graph image. Ah. And so I've gone in as part of this pull request and submitted open graph images or linked to existing open graph images for many of them. Uh huh. But uh, there will there are still plenty that don't have an image, and therefore they will show like this one does. A blank space there. Oh yeah. Ah oh, yes, graphic for Jenkins agent. Yes. <laughs> so in okay, and here's one that looks especially bad in dark theme. Oh yeah. Be and I think the reason there is because this image has a transparent background. Uh huh. And that's that's not especially good for it. Yeah. And interestingly enough, that very light plus sign on the white is actually showing up. I was thinking we would lose that, but. Hmm. Okay, so that was, let's see, where did you see that? That was. I think on the top row, the middle one, I think, had it. First one. one. Yes, there it is. Okay, so it's still visible just fine there, even in dark theme. It wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, but it's visible. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Okay. All right. Now there is there is one thing that I saw as I was reviewing it that that was not was for me not a positive. So I'm going to show you that. Let's see if the top level page. Oh, is that still on dark theme? This, this is yes. That doesn't do good for the noble butler, does it? It it does not. I hadn't had never tried that. Yeah. Uh, the, that's that's a that's glaring for sure. Yeah. And if dark theme is going to be something that each user controls themselves, right? Which which I believe is correct. It is that is user controlled as far as I understand it. So that might be a problem too. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. It's so here's the recent post. Ah, so this one does not does not have it visible. One of the things that Jan has done in his in, in this enhancement is he has. Oh, that's awful. Okay, so this dark setting is not a workable setting. Just uh, let's switch back. So it was dark. Disabled. Oh, that's wow. Okay, relaunching. Coming back. <sighs> Okay, here we go. So now back to this one, there was, oh, I wanted to show one of the complexities here and it's in the pull request itself. So if we look at this pull request, I made a comment for Jan's benefit on this one. That what he did is he added the upcoming events into the top level page. So the top level page looks like this, right? It's got top level logo, the jumbotron that scrolls from one thing to another automatically. Then it's got some features, a video, and then recent blog posts. But what he did was he added the contents of this events page or of the events in the events page to it. Ah. 
and and the challenge was the the layout isn't nearly as pleasant it's got this you see the in yellow the odd odd date yeah. formatting it's very precise it's just not how human beings typically read dates right and instead of being tiled like he'd done with the with the blog posts this is simple single list right so so the idea my comment there was hey i i actually personally very much like this layout i find this layout more attractive it's fun it's interesting it it makes me think oh what am i reading here yeah. and see i'm not a fun interesting person so that's what you always want to filter anything i say well I, hearing from different people is a good thing right we want to we want to know the, the opinions of different people but That's it may great. very well be that maybe he needs to look at the event page why should i mean do we want the event page to be so boring if the blogs are this interesting well and and my thought was that hey if 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 we're going to do it we could do events as a separate pull request and consider how how should they be laid out should they be mm -hmm. Right now, there are no events on the top level page, and I've submitted a pull request proposing two, Hacktoberfest and CDCon, that in order to get two, I have to look ahead six plus months. CDCon mm -hmm. is in May, and Hacktoberfest is all the way into October. Okay. So, so major events don't happen often, right? There aren't, aren't a bunch of them. Is there no DevOps, DevOps world? DevOps World would be a major event, but no date's been announced yet. Okay. So those kinds of things are, for me, it's like events maybe at most two or three. We it's rare that we have more than more than four as events. More typically, we've got zero or one. Okay. Oh, there's DevOps World. All right, great. Anything else? Nice work, though. I'm glad somebody's good is looking at some of this stuff. Oh yeah, Jan's Jan's work is very impressive. Really, really good. All right, so next. Oh, and also, can I? It, 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 we are testing it on Firefox and Cringe Edge and everything so, else. Safari. Yeah, Edge, sense. Edge, and Firefox. Actually, let's bring it up just to be sure. That's a that's a good one to do. So here we'll take this one and let's go look at it while we're here. Here's Firefox, and here is. that page in Firefox. Okay, let's scroll down first, see how it looks there. Okay, so there it is on the top page. Oh, and that's interesting. On this top page, it's now got upcoming events. Whereas mm. on the Chrome top page, maybe I'm missing it, but I don't see upcoming events. Oops, let's go to the top page just a minute. Okay, I don't see upcoming events on the top page at all here. No. Interesting. Okay, so that's worth flagging. Let me note that to him. Um, we detected during Doc's office hours, Asia, that upcoming events... is visible and empty on Firefox, but is not visible on Chrome with the current uh, pull request. Fair enough to make the comment? Yeah.
<laughs> no, you're going to make us be the heavy thing. Great. All right, uh, Mahmoud, I see that you've got a hand raised. What question? Uh, I have seen the the blog uh, blog bus car right now, and the images. If, if the image is white, it's a bit not a good UX. If we have a border to the blog bus card, so I suggest to put border to them. Like, can you scroll up? Uh, seeing a white background image. So like yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, so so what you're saying is you think Adding it should a have a, a, a visible, a clearly visible border in this case? Yeah, at least I, uh, I have sent a, uh, a comment in the same poll request right now. And about the upcoming events, I'm asking um, if we can, if I can work on it, like uh, fixing it, but I want more details how uh, the UI will be. Yeah, and and I am not a viable UI designer. So telling already, I'm delighted with this layout and, and think, hey, that's really cool, but I have no concept of how how best to do that layout. So. I am not the right person to guide you on on how might it work. You could certainly ask, as you did in the pull request, hey, are there are there things that you can help in Jan's work on this? And I, I think it's a fair question. I I don't know. I'm not sure how he prefers to work on it. Right now, the the <laughs> code that's in there, you can certainly see his changes he's made. And my proposal was, hey, I would love to have the blog post without the changes to events. I think it's it's great. But if he wants to do both the blog post and events, I think the events piece needs work. Okay, the, so this is so this, the suggestion you are asking for is just to changing the the, the date, how it's look like. No, no, it's it's actually more than that because I think that I think that to the reader, to the person doing the reading, they will find this layout rather glaring. Into they'll find it inconsistent when they scroll down below upcoming events. So here, if you can imagine that there were events, the the three lines of events: CDCon, mm -hmm. DevOps World, and if they were here. For me, at least, that's visually surprising to see a single wide thing with a very little bit of text and then multi-column as the next thing right below it. I was mm -hmm. expecting events to be laid out in, in, in the case of Jenkins events right now on the website, they lay out like this. They, they look like, oh, let's see, that won't do. I've got to bring up a pull request. Just a minute. We need a pull request that will show them. So here we go. Let's look at a prototype of a pull request here. And we'll look at the preview environment. And when I go to community events, notice that they're already ah. columnar. Yeah, and if I that's, click that's on them, better. they expand. And and this is this is sort of the thing that I was assuming might occur here, but with better better design than than what this is. This is this is what we've had for a long time, but it's it, it certainly is not as pretty as I'm sure a a skilled web designer could create. Right. At least the dates are prominent. That's what I was going to say. If we if this is like a list of four to max six. It sh there should be something that, at a glance, I know what time of year this is. It's like, oh my God, there's not all these next week. Right, right. And so, so the 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 fact that this gives me the visual cue that hey, that's May eighth, and right. this is October one. That and and the oh hey, it's in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, or it's a, a virtual event. Those right. those are already pretty good hints. And not using a lot of screen real estate. So, for me, that was that was okay. I I like the 
the columnar nature of this, and it fits with the rough number of major events that we display. Right. Typically, yeah. not more than four. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's that, better. Okay. Go Take, ahead. Speak. Go ahead. You can. No, no. I can okay, more than you. you have. Your turn. Okay, so uh, I'm talking about like right now, it's not better to be tails as they will take a lot in the page. They could be uh, following a grade uh, like the posts uh, below, like it it will be three per their line following the column. It will be better uh, than its tails. So you are suggesting to creating them or we are going to use the the same the same bar request that you sent. And I'm not understanding the question. I apologize. So uh, I, I don't know how best to do the layout. I just know that for me, I have a preference towards this columnar, columnar view mm -hmm. of major events with one, two, or three across the horizontal. Is that what you were asking, Mahmoud? Or could you yeah. explain further? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Yeah, because for this one, what at a glance, what to me is the most prominent is like the 12 a.m. I right, which, for a minute to see the Hacktoberfest and CDCon. Well, and, and that may actually be a bad choice, right? Because it, the day of the the day and the month are probably more important to people than the than the time of day. Right. So so it may be that this already is an indicator. Oh, that that's probably not the 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 best way to do it. We'd like to somehow highlight. May 8th is the big date. Or on this one, the fact that it's in fact a two-day event and we're not giving them any hint that it's a two-day event. Oh, yeah. And actually the time is really misleading because what's the time, Eastern US? Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm betting that, that those times are not accurate if I'm in Mumbai. Uh, well, certainly. And it, I'm pretty sure the webpage doesn't know my time because... I when I defined this, I set it to 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh -huh. And and it's it should therefore be showing 8 a.m. because I'm in mountain time at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. So so this this clock that's being shown there is is showing it in local time. And local time is is probably good because when I fly for a physical event, local time is a good choice, right? Because when I fly there, I want to know what time it is in local time. But, but a virtual for the effect. virtual event, right? That's it's the well, and virtual event, particularly this one, is a virtual event that is thirty-one days long. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's some some you know a, a start time is probably irrelevant here. It's rather it's an all-day event and it lasts for thirty-one days. Right. Yeah. And there now, because I'm boring, I like and because I like that blue and cranberry. That's to me very pleasing. I like that they're all the same. Mm -hmm. But if the blogs are going to have all different ones, then why don't we have special graphics for CDCon and Hacktoberfest and DevOps World? Yeah, and and there the challenge I think for me at least is I don't know unless we do our own blog post about those things, I'm not sure where we would reliably get an, an, a specific image for each. Right. Who puts those up? I mean, are you the one who puts the major event? Yeah, a writer does. Mahmoud, you had a question? Uh, no, uh, I, I haven't raised my hand. Sorry. Oh, okay, great. All right. Okay. So, so I... I, I think right now the answer for me is I don't have an answer. Uh, we'll keep giving feedback and chatting back and forth with, with Jan Faracek in terms of how this, this improvement is evolving. I think it's, it's worth the further discussions and encouragement for people to, hey, take a look at it. Um, I think this one, was this the one that we had it? seen it in dark mode is there a way to tell firefox dark mode let me see because i thought dark mode for firefox okay so customize dark from the themes okay so ah i i clearly don't know how to drive firefox yeah. nearly well enough 
So we'll just, it needs more exploring to see, hey, how does it, how does it look in dark mode, et cetera? By the way, I noticed, I think when it went by, when you had the PR up where he had like a shot in the PR, the ones that are all white, transparent or whatever, I think uh-huh. there was a very faint border on them. In what and, showed, and that would help, I think. Right. And and there definitely is. So let's, let's make a note of that. Way. And and hey, that maybe was something that border that needs to be just noted. a little. Let's put it here is. Yeah, let's make the that. border a little more dominant might solve it. Right. So. Uh, Mahmoud, okay. Suggested and may have agreed that uh, a little, uh, a, a more clearly visible border around the images, the open graph images, would make it easier to see the to well let's see make it easier to see the order and organization of the blog posts on the page yeah visible border uh not sure how it would look look in dark mode right because i didn't right. run it in dark mode to see yeah and it and it may be i mean some of it too is that like those ones that are white are just kind of boring i mean each one of those individually is not very well done just like mm-hmm. i threw some things up here right right I mean, like the size of jenkins versus the penguin and you know mm-hmm. right so Maybe if these things are showing like this, though, the blog writers will be inspired to do something a little. Well, certainly this this picture is a lot better than anything I've ever created. Yeah, that's that's a really beautiful piece of work. This one is something I create all the time. And it's 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 exactly me rather flat and boring. Uh huh. (laughs) Well, you underestimate yourself, but yeah, and I'm a words person. I mean, I'm never going to create anything interesting. I mean, part of it would be nice if they had a resource that they could say, you know, I'm aesthetically challenged. Can you suggest, can you give me an image here? Right, right, exactly. Good. All right. Okay, so we've we've touched on the two blog posts that are the two poll requests that I most wanted to be sure we we looked at. Now, where did my... I'm in the wrong window. There we go. Let's bring up the right window. This window. Where is my window? Here we are. Okay, good. All right. So we've talked through the two pull requests that were on my list. Oh, no, I take it back. We've talked through one. There's another one that I want to be sure that we get to, which is image contributing guidelines. So Kevin Ah. has, has made some recommendations on, hey, let's do images and let's set some a little bit better set of standards for images on how we do them ah so here we go previous discussion yeah maybe and so let's what i wanted to do was let's look at the way he's phrased it and see if there are any things that the rest of you would say oh hey we should change this or that can you make this just a little bit larger? Somebody I can to go and get her get new glasses. I think I'm just absolutely. Noticing. Is that is that large enough? Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. All right, so this one needs to be fixed. You cite local URLs. Oh, no, no, this is a contributing guide. Wrong comment, bad comment. Sorry, okay. Uh All right, so. Uh 
oh, this is him just changing it to sentence per line. Okay, sorry. So okay. we can ignore this. Ignore, ignore, ignore. And now let's find, I want to find the thing about image layout. Let's, okay, come on, where's the images? Adding images. Okay, so new section. All right, so when you add screenshots or images, be sure that they are focused, clear, and useful. Use consistent screen dimensions. Okay. Between 1024 by 768 and 1440 by 900. Okay. Focus the screenshots coverage. Okay, right, so so zoom in on the piece that matters and provide alt text. Now, this is something we don't do. And, and that's that's difficult for those who are, in, who are visually impaired, right? Uh -huh. Depending on images is a bad thing if we don't do alt text. So it's a, it's a good place for us to say, hey, let's improve our behavior here and use alt text. Yeah. Now, that's not terribly heavyweight in terms of standards for pictures. Let's do some quick scanning to see if there's more. No, this is just sentence per line. Okay. Well, what I would I, say is missing for somebody, and this is probably me. I don't know how to implement any of those things in ASCII Doctor. Ah, okay. So guidance on how to so, actually insert an image. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, I knew how to, I can insert an image and if it's too small or too big on the page, I can change the width and, and stuff. But, uh, but, you know, I need specifics, but I don't know how to specify that, you know, what the specific size is or. Right. Okay. So how about let's put that in. Uh, Docs Office Hours Asia. Asia noted that it would be good to insert a an example image markup into this text. Or a link to the ASCII doc, um, documentation that tells you how to do it too. Right. Link to the ASCII doc documentation. If it's good. So that the reader, the, the writer can see multiple examples. of image placement on the page. Yeah. Or of how to implement these standards. We could just put it a generic. Page and text wrapping. Text wrapping. And alt text and. Right, alt text. And how to implement any other image standards. Yeah, let's help with that. How to implement the practices described in this page? Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Because, like, I'm not the one where he says the center in. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, it's a real problem because some of those Jenkins screens are really big and really busy. So, mm -hmm. if you put a screenshot of the whole thing, you can't see. But it's also disorienting. I've done it where I take a little corner of it and that's there. I don't know where it is on the damn screen. Right, exactly. The The complexity there is how do I get enough enough focus to, to not lose visual, but still retain context. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Now, I apologize. We've hit my, my hour limit that I can do. You um, stayed up late tonight, Dad. I did. It's it's late and I need some sleep. 
<laughs> and I need uh, to although, get back to the kitchen. Mahmoud, as far as I know, are you in Egypt? Yeah, it's, it's uh, 5 p.m. right now. Oh, oh, okay. So it's it's not five. Wait a sec. 5 p.m.? I would have assumed it was. Okay, okay. Yes. It's the same hour of the morning for you. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I you... haven't slept yet. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, it was cool. great. I hope you'll come back. You were fun. Well, yeah, and, well, and you are certainly welcome in, we do Doc's Office Hours Europe that may be better suited to your waking hours, it, it, but it's up to you. We're happy to have you in either or both. Both, okay, both. That, that's, okay, I will join both as possible. And uh, I'm, I'm currently going to join uh, UX uh, stage because I'm interested uh, to hear about stuff about UX to make uh, Jenkins better. Mm. Great. Look forward to seeing you there. That's wonderful. Yeah, and, and I have a, just a little bit question uh, okay. about pagination. I have seen pagination and blog have been changes, and and blog uh, blog insights it hasn't changed. So I'm uh, we can work on it to be in the Jenkins component as it's served here and here. I'm I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. So. You're saying that the pagination has changed because it certainly has changed here. Where is it yeah. that you say it hasn't changed? Uh, blog Insights, the plugin. Blog Insights. Blog Insights? I don't know what that is, but. Plugins, plugins. Oh, plugins. Oh, this one. Okay. So, so I see. So, what you're saying is here, if we can, that this uses a different pagination component. I think yeah. that's what you're saying, right? So yeah. if I search for Git, for instance, here the pagination component is a different component. Ah, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. And now that's that's one I don't think anybody's proposed making the pagination into a web component. I'm not sure how it would work, but it's worth asking Gavin Mogan and Jan Faracik if, if that is a viable web component or not. Uh, it's an interesting question. I don't. I was um, thoroughly impressed when Gavin made this top bar into a web component, and when he made this bottom bar into a web component. Those those things were already more than I expected was possible, and so it may in fact be possible to to have the have the pagination be a web component as well. Um, like it, it can be a web component. We can share uh, the data uh, through the component to add to have the right pagination through all the websites. So I kind of started proposing that uh, that this issue, but I, I forgot where I proposed it. I think I proposed it in the plugins uh, uh, plugins rebel. Okay. So uh, so I will mention uh, the other people about converting it to, to the component, it will be the right way or just editing it, um, plugins websites. Well, so, and and the right, right or wrongness in web layout is I am exactly the wrong person to ask on right or wrongness. Jan and Gavin both know much better than I would ever know what's what are good practices and what aren't good practices in doing web page design and web page layout. So, Trust, trust them and chat with them about it. Me, me, I, I'm lucky to have opinions about how things look. And I know my opinions are invalid when it comes to how they should be done yeah. in terms of the markup. Me too. It'd actually be that, fun if they're playing with this stuff to have an announced meeting where they would be there and anybody who's interested could show up and talk about mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, the the challenge there is that Gavin is more on your schedule, Meg, okay. and Jan is more on the time zone that Mahmoud's in, uh, being from the UK. And so Gavin is a late night person, and therefore they don't really have a time of day mm -hmm. when they actually have overlapping overlapping personal mm -hmm. calendars. Well, one or the other could be, you know, either one of them could be. It would yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, uh, could could I ask? I'm asking for the uh they are uh, username on uh, on GitHub. So, F. yeah. So the username on GitHub is Hawkeye, H A L K E Y. Oh uh, yeah, I know it. Uh, it's on the Rebel uh, about Jenkins component, right? Right. 
Yep. Okay. And the other, the other one? Uh, Jan, J-A-N, Farachik. And you can see that on the pull request for oh, yeah, the yeah. layout the blog, improvements. The blog one. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Thanks so much. You bet. Any other topics before we end for today? Good meeting. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Recording should be available 24 to 48 hours, depending on how well or poorly I do at getting it uploaded. Along with all those GSAC things you have to review.